Hi folks, my name is Nicholas White, and I'm going to talk to you about percussion sound effects during the silent film era. Now, a lot of percussionists and drummers are aware of the evolution of the drum set during the 1900s, the teens, and the 20s, but few people are actually aware that percussionists were in high demand with many jobs uh, for silent films and actually providing realistic sound effects to accompany films that were silent where the technology could not provide the sound quite yet. Now, percussionists would be situated at a table much like this behind the actual screen so the audience couldn't see them. See them. And the audience would be seeing a train, for example, going by, and there would be a percussionist with quick instincts to perfectly match what was going on the screen. Now, just to demonstrate some of these effects, you would very commonly find whistles. The most obvious and common one was a cuckoo whistle. This one is uh, around 19, 1914 with the early uh, Ludwig decal uh, a cuckoo whistle. And this was tunable, so you could get different pitches with this plunger. And you'd get different ones. This is one by Ludwig. This one uh, of perfection make. I, I think uh, Duplex made these. Also tunable. And then you have this one uh, by the Yerkes Company, which is actually a company out of New York that uh, you know, stopped producing actually around 1914. Like, so it's very, very old. And it had actual pitches you could tune it with a plunger. And then other whistles would be for transportation. This one would be for a, for a locomotive whistle or a small train by Noakes and Nikolai of Boston. Uh, you'd have another Ludwig and Ludwig one of that same time around 1914, uh, where this one would be meant to save space because percussionists were walking around and carrying all these equipment. This one could be four, four types of whistles in one. It could be a train, or it could be a cuckoo by turning off two of these sounds. Or you could pull the plungers out and make it a big ocean liner if you wanted turn off the two top ones. So it could be a lot of different things. Uh, you have another perfection make train whistle here. And then you have a leady one, a mahogany leady one, a very early, for a ferry boat whistle. Uh, here you have a very early uh, metal steamship whistle. And uh, obviously, transportation was very important in films. Uh, uh, cowboy films would have chase scenes with horse hooves and cowboys chasing each other. You would have police sirens and during chase scenes. You would have trains chasing each other. This train effect is another one by Ludwig and Ludwig. Uh, and these were actually went on to be used by, for radios as well, actually. But uh, you would get a whole assortment of small things, too. This uh, three-tone whistle was for interurban trains, which were actually a little bit like modern subways or streetcars. You would have scenes with a rooster in the morning. You'd have, you'd have a Ludwig and Ludwig baby cry here very common in, in films, obviously. Uh, a lot of us don't know what, what sound a tree frog makes, but this is actually a tree frog imitation. Uh, you'd have nightingale whistles were very common, were filled with water. You'd have the comedic slide whistle for comedies. Animal effects like a dog bark. Uh, they made these, actually these are called friction drums. Uh, they made these in, in incrementally larger sizes for, uh, I think, dog bark, pig grunt, bear growl, and lion's roar being the largest. Um, so they, they found some way to present every single sound imaginable. So that about wraps it up. Uh, I'd like to thank you for going through my sound effects and learning a little bit about film history and percussion history. And uh, hopefully I'll be making videos in the future, and you can come check those out. So till then, thank you very much.